Yo, what's good, H-Town? It's Mo back again with another episode of Kicking It. And on this week's episode, we have sneakerhead, acoustic guitar player, and Dynamo FC defender, Zarek Valentin. Yo, what's up, everybody? It's Mo back again with another episode of Kicking It. And today, I've got the one and only very thirsty Zarek Valentin. What's up, bud? How you doing? Oh, chug, chug, chug. There you go. Sorry. Body armor. <laughs> Shout out, body armor. Appreciate it. Um, you can uh, get that at our sponsor, Kroger, by the way. Love that. Kroger's fantastic, too. Um, but no, I'm good. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. This is uh, something I wasn't a part of, I guess, the original time. The fans want it, so I'm happy to be a part of it. So uh, I'm just going to jump right into segment one. Um, you are unapologetically a man of conviction, of many convictions, and and you hold to that. And I just want to know, if that is that something that just kind of always has been what sparked that in you? And, and um, yeah. Um, it's just kind of been like that. Uh, my, my, you know, my stepdad and my mom raised me basically were just kind of like, you know, be, be firm in who you are and who your what your beliefs are. And, and as long as you are true to that, then the, the people that care most about you and what you believe in will, will flock to that. And then the people who don't like that, then do you really want them in your life? Like, no. So that's just pretty much how it has been. And then obviously, um, you know, I got married. My wife has, has been the, my biggest supporter in that sense as well. And the things that you really believe in and want to, um, you know, help bring the light or whatever it might be, uh, just go for it. And whether it's goofy shoes or whether it's LGBTQ plus community, you know, support them or, uh, you know, uh, Black Lives Matter movement, whatever it might be, women, WOSO, women's soccer movement, whatever it might be, like, embrace it and then you know and i find that the more genuine and true you are with yourself you know no matter what route your life kind of takes at least you're happy and you're like cool with that because you you did what you love when i moved out to portland and this is 2016 starting social media was becoming a thing and it was really picking up speed really quickly um you know from the days where i remember my first instagram post in in montreal you know on the you know picture of my converse or whatever it might be so things changed a lot and then i started realizing that I slowly was having a, you know, group of followers that would just engage with me. And then eventually you become brave enough to put one thing out there and then you get 98% support. And then there's two people who don't like it. And then you do it again. And then there's a few people who don't like it. There's always those haters out there. But then again, Word. I look at their pages and I'm like, okay, dude, like, I don't know you. You're from <laughs> Iowa and you have 16 followers and you're just out here trolling people. When I look at your tweets and replies, so do you, do I really care what you think? No. And then ultimately, you know, bringing light to causes or situations or whatever it might be that mean a lot to me is is invaluable. And um, and that's been something that, you know, I've gotten a lot of support, like I said, from my wife in terms of, you know, when we started, we got married in 2018 and been together for a while, but when we moved back, she, you know, really encouraged me to kind of take that step and use my platform. And it also helps when your brother is a social media director and manager for a professional sports team. Then you get that, uh, that, extra, that extra buffer to, to to check some things if you need to, if you need to. One thing that we've lost in our culture is the, the conversation, right? Mm. It's interesting Absolutely. because it's interesting because with social media, people can hide behind the avatar of a body armor bottle. Like, oh, who's this? <laughs> I don't know. It's a body armor bottle. So I can say whatever I want to this person. I can get it off my chest. If I walk into the Starbucks and I walk up and I see them, I'm not saying anything. Not, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't have that. I don't have the cojones to do that. So social media has given people a platform to say things like they would but they wouldn't in person and thus i would say a lot of the things that i feel in person to somebody about my beliefs or whatever and i'll talk to someone and i'll give it to them and i um was on a call with someone and you know we differed on some some you know lgbtq plus rights in terms of you know the way way fluctuates with religion and we had mm -hmm. a little bit of a conversation and it, you know, we gave our ideas and we were able to have that conversation. I missed that. And I think a lot of people missed that. But back to your main point is uh, it wasn't always like that, right? When I got to Portland and kind of social media became a thing and I had a little bit of people who listened to my tweets, then then it became a little bit more and you get a little bit of confidence when you realize that the majority of people respect your views and will try to amplify that. I'm gonna move right along and go to, go to segment two here. Um, it's just a simple game of copper drop. You know what it is. Some some nice 2021. Uh, I know you're a Nike guy, so I'm gonna I, I'm sticking with the Nike vein. I don't want you. I appreciate uh, it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so these are coming out soon. They're the trophy, uh, the trophy room Air Jordan ones. 
pop or drop. Those came those came out two days ago. And yeah. I am gonna spitefully drop because I sent five or six emails to raffle store at raffles at trophyroom.com and their mailbox was full. I tried it three times the first time and I tried two times this next time. Full Nothing. the entire time. So uh, it's a spiteful, spiteful spite. drop. All right, moving right along. Uh, I, I know I, I threw a, I threw a few other shoes in here besides That's okay. the one. No I, problem. I, see, I see you I see you in the ones all the time. So I know you're a ones guy. Yeah. Yes. But uh threw a threw a few other ones out here. This is the Clot Nike Air Max one. Cop or drop. That is a that is a cop with good socks though, because the top, okay. the upper is clear and see-through. So you have to have good socks. God forbid you wear no socks with that and your toes are sticking Ooh. through. That's an immediate no-no. But yes, That's those nice. those are definitely a cop, but it's gonna be super hard to get. Moving right along, we got the Nike LeBron 8 South Heat. I had those and I sold yeah. them to a teammate. I had it those. Both. It is I had those. It's, it's, it's a cop. But the reason I'll tell you why. So those are like, if you look at resale, they're crazy hot. Mm -hmm. And for for homies, like normally, I probably would either give them away or like I'll just ask for like like I ask for a hundred bucks, and it's like not even that much. And then I'll usually put it towards gas money or I get cams and stuff. Um, <laughs> and Nico Lemoyne has my pair, and I got it an eight and a half. Nico Lemoyne has. Um, and they just don't fit. They're very, they, it's a very small eight and a half and it was uncomfortable. And mine was like, I bought them brand new, they were crispy and I just couldn't wear them. And I was like, bro, I just don't give these much love. Like if you want them, you could just throw me whatever you want. If not, like you could basically have them. I don't even wear them. So it was like, bro, a thousand percent. You, you've tried them on to fit them. And I was like, cool, you can have them. But I want those in a nine so I can wear them properly with those hundred percent. Uh, back to back to some Jordans again. Um, yep. The Air Jordan Five Retro Raging Bull. It is a respectful drop. Okay. Okay. Not a five Eight, guy. Lo love the colorway. Colorway flames. The the collar is too puffy. It's like mm. you're never ever gonna roll your ankle, and it's really tough to wear the like. Like I wear thinner jeans. It means thinner, meaning like skinnier jeans, and it's really tough because that's like. If you look at the top of that collar of the shoe, when you look down, it's super bulky, like crazy bulky. I'm talking like an inch worth on each side. And it's around, just too thick for me. Around yeah, there. that's what it's the yeah. ankle support, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's it's very respectful because I love the I love red shoes and it, it's a beautiful shoe, but I just can't wear them. So it's a respectful drop. Gotcha. And then this last one, I believe this one. I'm not sure on the dates. I think this one comes out near the end of the year. Don't get, don't quote me on this one, but it, it's one of my personal favorites. But wait, wait, this is cool gray you 11s? There. Yeah, you know I what have, it is. I have, I have the other pair. Yeah, um, I have the, I have the ones from 2011, 2011, 2012. Um, love them. They're beautiful. Yes. Um, the only difference is apparently the pair that I have is a leather upper and they're synthetic. I'm not sure. Um, Surprisingly enough, it's going to be another respectful drop. I don't okay. wear uh, 11s as much. Um, it's a very basketball issue. They're very comfortable. Um, I have the Concords and those, and those are the only two pairs of 11s I have. Um, and it's I, I love sick. I love the shoe, and I and I and I can't say no. The, it's one of my favorite shoes, and the cool gray ones is my other favorite colorway. And I will probably respectfully pass, but maybe we can coordinate and we can get you a pair. How's that sound? Hey man, I'm a nine, all right? That's all I'm saying. You're a nine? <laughs> I'm a nine. Well, listen, you wear the same size as me. You're like one of the first people. Well, you and Marcelo and, uh, and you and Marcelo are, wear nines. And Marcelo and I have a lot of shoe conversations and he's <laughs> a, the beneficiary of a lot of the shoes that I don't necessarily wear. Dude, I, I've been looking forward to this last segment. It's about music. You and I chopping yeah. it up about music. You're I the music you. guy. Yeah, man, I'm the music. I love music so much. So all the artists and songs I chose, well, all the artists I chose are Houston artists. So okay. just local. Uh, we start off with probably the most famous of the four, probably. Or no, the last one's, he's, 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 he's it, pretty hot right now. He's pretty hot right now. But does, I'm his name with, rhyme with, does his name rhyme with Shmava Shmat? No, 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 not at all. We're going to start off with I a know, band called... We're gonna start off with a band called The Suffers. The song is called Make Some Room. One of the reasons the Rolling Stones is one of my favorite bands is a lot of times when you play, they have horns with the rock music. And that's for me, 
when you add in like the trumpet or a sax, like I love mm -hmm. Springsteen, same way. When you add these things in there, for me, it takes oh, another yeah. level. And oh, for me, yeah. when I think of like Springsteen and the Stones and stuff like that, it immediately, like, it's something I want to hear. I love hearing. I haven't even heard a voice yet. They're like a, a nice fusion of a lot of things. Um, and they do this in every song. They're like an eight, nine piece band. They have the keys, the horns and everything. I love it. That's why we're, we're 35 seconds and I love it. That for me, that's like my ideal style of music. The next artist is actually the guy who, uh, he's one of, he's the producer for one of my, my bands. Um, he's awesome. Huh? His name's John Allen Stevens. J-O-H-N, middle name Allen, A-L-L-E-N yep. Stevens. Great haircut. Called motorcycle. High and tight. High and tight haircut. High and tight. Yeah, he's a cool guy. He lives in the East End, maybe like 10 minutes away from the stadium. The song's called Motorcycle. Okay, you said that there. All right, motorcycle drive. That kind of like mellowy. Sitting there, you kind of sit there with the crowd. Just... Yeah, yeah, it's a vibe. It's a total vibe. <laughs> the dude's sure. sick. Madeline Edwards. The song's called Trying to Make Sense. You have this like jazzy hip hop kind of roots, you know what I mean? Kind of like easy listening vibe that- Oh yeah, yeah. That, I mean, well, I'm very happy you're telling me about this because these are people that are gonna get followed. But that's, the thing is, it's nice when you can kind of chuck something on like that and just like in many scenarios and just listen to music, right? Because some music yeah. has very like certain moments, right? Word. You know, you can't turn on DMX and start cooking. <laughs> you can't turn on DMX and start driving. Like driving to DMX, like you're you're gonna get a ticket. Like you're, you're gonna, gonna get a ticket. Over. Last one I wanna, oh, wanna do, this one's the only one that has nothing to do with John Allen's teams. This guy has oh. multiple, he has, he has his own producer. His name's Tobe, T-O-B-E. Last name's Nwigwe, N-W-I-G-W-E. Yep. -E. I have called a feeling eat. we're gonna go down, eat or try Jesus? Eat. This is his latest single. He just performed this on the BET Awards at the end of last year. It's fantastic song. Ooh. He's got a good flow, man. He's got a good flow. Ooh. <laughs> ooh. Wow. <laughs> and like, you get those, like, the, there are certain songs that are just like, ooh, like you have to pause it and like, yeah, it's a, you okay, gotta like shake it off. <laughs> Unbelievable. That's like coming in with the, mmm. He's and got some bars. He's obviously, got good that's flow. just the beat, and then you have the like the lyrics. This is all Houston people. These are all Houston people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This, doesn't, this doesn't happen in Lancaster County. The Amish, the Amish <laughs> don't rap like this. <laughs> man, no, it was it was awesome having you on, Z. No, thank really you so much, man. It's, it's exciting. Um, the fans wanted it. I'm happy to be here. Happy to give a little yeah, insight. Sure. Get my dog pumped up because apparently me barking like DMX doesn't, he doesn't like that <laughs> too much. But uh, thanks for having me, though. I appreciate it. Yeah, no doubt, man. Shout out to the Body Armor and to Kroger again. <laughs> no. And the Dash. And the Houston Dash. Absolutely. And, and MD, MD Anderson. Anderson. The, real, the real heroes over here.